my good colleague Gregory Copley of Defense and Foreign Affairs, the editor and publisher. He's traveling. He's in London. We come now to the Nigerian election of 2022, concluded with the victory going to the man representing the establishment, Bola Tinubu. However, there is new information that raises questions a great deal, not only about Tinubu, but about the legitimacy, the trustworthiness, the credibility, the stability of the whole country because of questions raised at the election and misrepresentations. Gregory, what do we know about Tinubu? What do we know about his presentation to the people of Nigeria? Well, firstly, we have to understand that Nigeria is this great bellwether for Africa. It's the largest population and the largest economy in Africa. Uh, it has moved very deliberately past an era of, of coups uh, which were intended to uh, save democracy uh, in in many years past, uh, and the military have have not intervened uh, this time, and have indicated that they don't want to intervene. But the reality is that the uh, Independent National Electoral Commission really uh, clear, uh, showed that it was bought off by the outgoing administration in order to put their candidate, Bola Tinubu, in the front seat of the election. Uh, he won uh, about a third of the votes, 36% of the votes. He won a third of the states in Nigeria, but he failed to win the something which was stipulated in the Constitution. He had to win not only a, a given number of states, but also the federal capital territory around Abuja. He failed to win Abuja. Now, the logical uh, outcome for, for the election commission would have been to call for a second round of voting between the top two candidates, uh, Atiku Abubakar and Bola uh, Tinubu. That they didn't do. They just awarded the election to Tinubu. Now, that's well and good. And the, it was appealed to the uh, elections court, which again ruled in favor of Tinubu, even though there was a prima facie case of uh, that, that it violated the Constitution. Um, there are always questions about the uh, the bribing and corruption within the courts and within uh, INEC, the Election Commission. But then we've now started to see greater attention being paid to, to the fact that Bolotinubu lied and committed uh, forgery and fraud on his election application in sworn documents. Uh, so... Uh, this included a lot about his educational qualifications, which, which he clearly lied about, and it included failure to disclose his criminal uh, prosecutions in the United States. Uh, um, and as a result, what we've seen belatedly as a result of a U.S. attempt under the Freedom of Information Act uh, to, to have documents in the federal government of the United States released uh, into the public domain. Now, uh, in September, the FBI said it would start releasing 500 documents uh, or 500 pages a month of its documents on uh, Tanubu uh, out of 2,500 total pages of, of um, material that they have on him. The CIA, the State Department, the IRS, the D uh, Drug Enforcement Agency have also got a mass of data about Bola Tinubu's activities in the United States, and they too are pre preparing to release all this information. And what it's starting to show is that uh, Bola Tinubu ha has used many aliases uh, uh, along his career, uh, including to gain uh, an education or to gain claims of education. Uh, and he, um, he, he basically put pressure on Chicago State University not to release the transcriptions of anything to do with him because they show that he used different names, that he used several different um, social security numbers in the United States, uh, some of which were clearly uh, borrowed or fraudulent. Uh, he clearly forged a number of documents. He uh, borrowed another person's identity to file uh, a, um, uh, studies which were required educationally. So he's done a number of things, but he particularly was prosecuted in Chicago in the 1990s uh, for narcotics trafficking. And uh, he basically 
uh, pleaded no contest to that and, and, and escaped with a forfeiture of four hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars rather than go to prison. So uh, there's there's a lot which is coming out about him. So the the appeal against the election outcome uh, after the, being rejected by the election courts was, is now getting ready to go to the Supreme Court of Nigeria. And that's going to be accompanied by all of this other information about uh, Tanubu's forgeries. If if Tanubu is if Bola Tanubu is in fact his name, uh, but he's lied on about literally every aspect of his life. Um, so it it gets to be a very interesting situation. It's to the point now where if the Supreme Court does not overturn this election then there will be serious consequences. I've had it, and that's one of the reasons I'm in London, speaking to a lot of my uh, African uh, correspondents who've come up to meet me, is that there will be consequences such as um, a move to impeach President uh, Tanubu, uh, starting either in the Senate or in the House of Representatives in Nigeria, but certainly there's there's cooperation among House and Senate people, the politicians there, to start... As a not only a, a impeachment of the president uh, to to overturn the election, but also to start censuring or impeaching uh, the Supreme Court if it fails to do its duty, and also, of course, to start prosecuting uh, officials within uh, INEC, the uh, the um, Independent National Election Commission, uh, as well. So this get, starts to get very very ugly. The military uh, has basically said, well, we don't want to be back in government ever again. It's just too too uh, damaging to the country to, to restart the clock every time. But what you will see is an increase in public unrest. You'll see the government uh, being, being unable to coordinate any uh, compromises with its uh, neighbours in ECOWAS, the Economic Community of West African States, in the case in the fight against the jihadist movement, such as Boko Haram and Islamic State West Africa and the like, so this is going to get really ugly really quickly and will further impact the Nigerian economy unless the Supreme Court does its duty. Now, I, I, we I have raise a, that. We have a minute, Gregory. Go ahead. We have a minute. The Supreme Court is actually being assaulted by the the Tanubu uh, State House with with bribery offers and all manner of coercive coercive measures so the the seven justices who we now know have been chosen for this supreme court case um, really are up against a massive dilemma whether they cave to corruption which they may or whether they bring the country into real chaos have, has either the UK government or the US government commented we've got 30 seconds no, they have not commented, but the fact that the U.S. government has now caved completely and is releasing documents uh, over five major agencies, including right. starting with the FBI, is, is a statement in itself. Gregory Copley, editor and publisher of Defense and Foreign Affairs. He's traveling. He's in London. The unfinished and deeply, deeply troubled election of 2022 in Nigeria, influencing all of Africa. Everybody watches very carefully what happens in Nigeria. This is CBS Eye on the World. I'm John Knight. You're listening to CBS Eye on the World with John Batchelor. 